Because if you don't say anything and walk out and come back and say, oh, I didn't do well in my test because my computer broke down, no one's gonna listen to you. So you're welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I'm Priscilla and on this channel we discuss everything related to education and lifestyle. So make sure that you do turn on your post notifications and subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything that I post. In today's video we're going to be talking all about the UCAT. So if you're applying to medicine, dentistry in the UK, you might be required to take the UCAT. So it's basically the University Clinical Aptitude Test and I'm just going to be giving you some information um, that you need to know both as a home student and if you're um, an international student applying to come and study in the UK. So this video is going to be split into um, six different segments. First one being all you need to know before you even register for the test. Second, the registration process. Thirdly, um, the booking process. How you need to prepare for the test. The day of the test itself, so what you should know when it comes to sitting the test. Finally, what you should do after you set the test. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing you want to do even before you register for the test is to check that the universities you're applying to require the UK CAT. So when it comes to medicine and dentistry, some universities um, require you to take the BMAT, whereas others require you to take the UCAT. So before you even register for it, make sure you know that what university you're applying to needs the UCAT, okay? You also need to check if you need any additional um, access arrangements. So um, they are kind of reservations made for candidates who need a bit more help. So things like extra time, rest breaks, and special physical arrangements that they might have to make for you. You also need to check if you're eligible for the um, UCAT bursary. So if you're a home student, so a UK citizen, and you're applying for the UCAT, you might be eligible to get bursary for the funding. You need to meet one of the criteria listed on their website um, to be um, eligible for the UK candidate bursary. So before you even register for it, make sure that you check the list and um, see if you're eligible and then when it comes to registration make sure that you put that um, requirement in there. Also you need to ensure that you have the right um, ID um, needed to sit the test on the day so this should be your photo ID that has your signature on it obviously it should not be expired they have specifications on their website um, specifying what they need the ID to contain to make sure you've gone through all of that and that you have that identification um, ready before you even register because what happens is if you show up on the day without the required id it will be seen as a no show now so moving on to registration you know what the ucat is what it entails you've checked you've done all the checks that you need to do now it's time for you to register to register you'll need to create a ucat account between the 16th of may 2023 and 21st september 2023 then now you want to submit the application for any access arrangements that you might be eligible for so if you need extra time if you need some rest breaks things like that this is the time um, to um, submit them when you're registering. Also if you're eligible to apply for UCAT bursary in the registration you do that. So like I said before go through the list of criteria that you should meet and you only need to meet one of them to be eligible. So um, they might also ask you to send in some evidence to prove that you are eligible for the UCAT bursary so make sure you upload any documents they ask you to upload and um, after that they'll give you a voucher code which you can put in when you're booking your test. Here you also need to read the fitness to sit um, document. It's basically a document that um, shows that you're declaring that by attending the test you're fit to sit it. Now moving on to the booking stage, so once you've created your account you can now start to book um, a date for you to set your test. Booking begins from the 20th of June 2023 all the way to the 21st of September. Make sure that you have um, looked out for your local um, test taking centre and book the test give yourself some time to prepare. Um, I'd say anything between six to five weeks is more than enough for you to prepare to sit and take the UCAT. Actually, I'm making another video. I'm giving you um, a step-by-step -step plan on how to prepare for um, and sit the UCAT. Everything you need to do between six weeks um, to get ready for, um, get well prepared for your UCAT. So the testing itself starts from the 10th of June to the 28th of September. However, the last day for you to book to get a test done is the 21st of September okay so after the 21st of September you won't be able to book to get a test done even though there's gonna be like a whole 
whole other week of testing um, happening, after the 21st, you won't be able to book to get your test done. So make sure that you've booked a date to get your test done latest by the 21st of September. Okay? So when it comes to um, test preparation, there are um, a couple of free resources that are very much available to you. I know there are um, a couple of commercial um, companies as well offering testing, which I'll come, I'll come on to later. So the first thing that's available to you um, are the question tutorials on the UCAT website. Go onto the UCAT website, go through these tutorials to, before you even start taking any questions. Because how can you start answering questions if you don't know what the questions are about? So I highly recommend that before you start taking any timed questions, do any questions, go through the, um, the question tutorials just so you understand more of what you're expected to do when you start actually answering questions, if that makes any sense. And then you have um, a question bank on the UCAT website again, that you can go through, familiarize yourself with the questions. And when you think you're confident, you can start to do the timed um, tests. I'm going to include a link of the UCAT um, question bank and you can go onto it and just have a feel for yourself. Have a look around, have a tour around the UCAT website and just familiarize yourself with everything that you need to know. So back to the commercial resources, there are a couple of companies out there that you might have heard of, so things like Medify. So I know some people like to use these um, these companies or these websites. And I mean, if you find them, if you think you'll find them helpful, definitely go for them. However, you need to know that the questions are not um, an identical replica of what it's going to be like in your UCAT. And also the scores and the banding, um, especially for the situational judgment, um, stuff like the bandage you'll be getting are not the same for the actual UCAT. Practice with them if you want to. Just keep it in the back of your mind that the scores you might be getting using Medify might not translate when you use the actual UCAS website or even when you sit the test on the day. It might help you to prepare, it might help you to um, to improve your pace when it comes to timing. So just make sure that even though you're using these um, commercial um, companies that you're definitely, definitely using the questions on the actual UCAT website because they will be a bit more representative of what your actual test will be like on the day. I know people who were doing so well with Medify and then they went onto the UCAT website, did those ones and the grades were very much different and I know people who did so well on Medify got like high grades band, band one every time and didn't get the same grades in the actual test. So I'm not saying it's definitely go for it. It's helpful. I use Medify myself um, and I know there are other um, companies out there as well, but just make sure that you know, you understand that it's not an identical representation of what your actual test will be like on the day. Practice using the on-screen calculator and get used to the timings. Pace yourself, get used to how much time you need to spend on a question. So then brings us to the day of testing. What do you need to know before you sit the test on the day? Take an ID, a valid ID with you. Make sure that it's signed by you, you have a signature on it, and that it's not expired. Like little things like this, you don't want to get sent away because you didn't have a valid ID. Check where your test center is and leave um, enough time, plenty of time to get there because things might happen, there might be traffic. So just make sure that you leave like an extra hour to get there. You need to take your test between the 10th of July and the 28th of September. They won't make any reservations for anybody after the 28th. And also reminder, you, the last day you can book for your test is the 21st of September. So make sure you've booked by the 21st and you've sat it by the 28th. If any unlikely issues occur on the day of testing, so let's say your computer breaks down, um, your mouse stops working, just unforeseen circumstances like that, make sure that you report it on that same day at the test center and obtain what they call an incident number. And then after that, you can go onto the website and follow the steps to report an incident. Because if you don't say anything and walk out and come back and say, oh, I didn't do well in my test because my computer broke down, no one's gonna listen to you. If anything happens that shouldn't have happened, make sure that you've reported it to them at the test center and you've obtained an incident report number. So now you've sat your test, um, you've got your results, what do you do? This is one of the most important stages as well. You need to be strategic here. So now one good thing about the UCAT over the BMAT is that you get your test results before you even apply. Go onto uni websites. Some unis might tell you what range that they ex accept, say a band one in situational judgment and an average of 600 and something. If the uni you're applying for does not accept anyone um, who gets a band three in situational judgment, 
don't apply to it because you can tell the end from the beginning. If you're applying to a uni that wants you to get band one or band two and you go at band three, there's no point applying to that university unless you have no other choices and all the unis are asking for that. So just make sure that whatever school you got, that you're strategic when it comes to applying, do your research, find out what kind of grades the unis um, accept um, and then apply accordingly. So preliminary scores will be issued in uh, mid-September and the final test statistics come a few days after that as well so you still have that information to make a decision. So now you've done all your research, you've done your, um, you know, what unis you want to apply for and what unis you you have a high chance of getting into with the UCAT score. Obviously, they take other um, things into consideration. So things like your personal statement, your predicted grades, the whole shebang. Like, now is the time for you to apply. Remember, if you're applying to medicine, dentistry, vet, or applying to Oxbridge, um, the deadline for application is the 16th of October. So now you have your results. Make sure that you put your UCAT application through latest by the 16th of October. Now, all you need to do is relax. You don't need to tell the university what scores you got UCAT will do that for you they will communicate to the universities I think somewhere in November and give um, your test results to them so you you have nothing to do after you've applied literally just leave it over to UCAT and they'll do that for you so this is it Ooh, um, no how could I forget this so one of the most important things I should have said and should have said it at the beginning when it comes to the test fees, home students pay £70, um, whereas international students, it's um, £115 the last time I checked. Obviously, like I said before, if you're a UK candidate, you might be eligible for UCAT bursary. So this is it. This is all you need to know for your UCAT um, gone through preparation, all of that information, all the deadlines you need to make sure you're aware of, um, your ID, making sure you have everything you need um, on the day. And yeah, I hope you found it helpful. I hope you're preparing. I hope you're feeling good about taking this exam. Like I said, I have made or will be making another video, a study guide type thing, um, which takes you through how to plan your time um, within six or five weeks and um, what you need to do every day, every week to prepare for the UCAT test. So make sure that you do subscribe and turn your post notifications on so that you know when that is up as well. So yeah, all the best, good luck with your UCAT test and I hope it goes well for you. I hope you get into your dream unis and do your dream courses and flourish really. Bye for now from me and I'll see you in the next one.